Good morning, and welcome to worship. I'm really glad that you're here with me today, as this is going to be a time for feeding of our souls, a time in which God's love just wraps us, in which we grow in Christ. We've been in the middle of a series on our emotions called The Passionate Jesus the last three weeks, and we will be continuing that as we learn more about how we are authentic in God's presence. But before we go to that, a couple of announcements. Next Sunday, we will have our annual meeting. This is when we gather. It'll be by Zoom this year, and I will send all the members a Zoom invitation. It will be by Zoom, and we will gather for the normal things that happen in an annual meeting. We will vote on names placed before us by the nominating committee for elders, deacons, trustees, and members of the committee. We will look at the work of all the church. We'll see the the funding for projects that the session is allocated. We will vote on the pastor's compensation. And we'll generally hear about what God's doing in the life of our church. So that'll be next Sunday at 11 a.m. This Wednesday, we'll resume the Bible study that I'm doing on this series, The Passionate Jesus. And so that will be at noon. If you would like to participate and haven't, just let me know. Uh, and I'll send you information about that. The invitation that you receive for 
this service and the, the, the Zoom after worship will get you into the Bible study at noon on Wednesday. Last week, in our series of The Passion of Jesus, we took a look at love, that warm feeling of love. We looked at the baptism of Jesus, and we saw how God the Father loves Jesus so graciously and lavishly. <clears throat> and this artwork by Adam Richardson shows us the love that a mother has for her child. We looked at that love, that warm love that we are called to give to one another. This week, we are looking at the emotion of anger. Here we have another picture by Adam Richardson. And this we see the angry face of the man. And so we'll be looking at the ways in which we negotiate our anger and ways in which the force and the power of anger can be a positive force in our lives. We enter into God's house. God calls us to worship in authenticity. And yet sometimes we feel as though we need to put a mask up in front of us, a mask of smiles when we feel sadness or a mask of smiles of calm when we do not feel that way. We do not need to fake it before God, but in God's presence, we put away our masks and we are free to be ourselves whether we are sad or angry or joyful or loving or fearful at the moment, as we are as accepted by God. I invite you to open your minds up at this time, open your hearts up, whether you are worshiping in your living room or in your kitchen, whether you are worshiping in your den, whether you are outside watching on your phone, all that would be awfully cold this time of year, let us focus ourselves fully on God. Please join me in our prayer that begins worship. Dear God, thank you for the beauty of your sun shining around and through winter clouds laden with snow. Thank you for the shimmering light reflecting off the descended snow. Thank you for the glory of your creation. We are grateful for all the small things that make life rich, like a warm cookie, an engrossing hobby, a good video game. We are grateful for the full range of emotions which you give us, for through them we experience all the highs and lows of life. Help us to channel our anger, to make changes for good in our lives and in the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us sing the wonderful hymn, How Firm a Foundation.
God comes to us so that we live in his joy and his ease. Often the things that we've done wrong bother us and keep us out of living in that grace. And the things that we've done to hurt others disturb us because we don't want to cause anyone pain. And so we take this time every week in worship to let the Spirit search our hearts and help us live more gloriously for him. Let us first pray silently and then together. Let us pray. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for all the ways in this last week in which you have helped us to live fantastic lives, in which you have helped us to go out of ourselves to help those in our families, those in our neighborhoods, those in our world. We do thank you that we live as your holy, glorious, loving people. And yet, oh God, we do know that we're still human and that we do make mistakes. We forget to do things that are loving for others or out of stubbornness or selfishness, we even refuse to. And God, we do also know that we have harmed others, sometimes intentionally out of peevishness or anger and sometimes unknowingly. Forgive us, O God. Restore us to your your good place. Restore us to living as you teach, as you will, as you call. And repair the damage that we have made. And if we can be part of that reconstruction, show us how and give us the spirit to do so. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, believe this really wonderful news. We have a fresh start. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please pass that peace to one another. And know that you can put in your prayer requests on the comments on Facebook Live and that I will take them up and we have a prayer team that will pray for you on Tuesdays. Hi friends, I'm so happy to be with you this morning where we're talking some more about our emotions, the things that we feel inside. And we're looking at Jesus and seeing that he felt the same emotions we feel. This week, can you guess what feeling we're talking about? I have someone showing you the feeling right here. Did you guess angry? Yes, we're talking about feeling mad. She has her eyebrows going down and a grumpy face on. Sometimes when we're mad, we cross our arms or stomp our feet. When we feel mad, our thoughts get a little jumbled. Sometimes our body just doesn't feel right. Feeling mad doesn't always feel very fun, but did you know everyone feels angry or mad sometimes? It's true. You feel mad. You're Grown-ups feel mad. Sometimes Miss Tara feels mad. Jesus felt mad, too. It's normal to feel mad. Mad and angry, they're just feelings. What's important about when we feel mad or angry is what we do with that feeling. You might be feeling mad or angry, and that's okay. But it's not okay to scream or shove or hit when you're mad. It's never okay to be mean to someone because you're mad. If we act like that when we're mad, we need to say we're sorry because that is not an okay way to behave when you're feeling mad inside. But the feeling, that's okay. In fact, when we feel angry, Sometimes that feeling is telling us something we need to learn or something we need to do. When you're feeling angry, you need to ask yourself, what should I do with this feeling? Maybe you're angry because you're hungry and you need to get something to eat. Maybe you're angry because you're lonely and you need someone to be with you and spend time with you. 
You might be angry because you're tired and your body's telling you, I need a rest. But sometimes we get angry because people are not being treated right. Sometimes it might be us. Maybe someone is mean to us. Maybe we see someone around us being bullied and not treated right. And our anger, we feel, is telling us that we need to do something. Something needs to change. So at those times when we're feeling angry, it is so important to notice we're angry and take a breath. Take a deep breath. Take a break and think, what can we do to help this situation that's making us feel angry? Maybe we need to talk to a grown-up. Maybe we need to talk to the person who's being mean and tell them, This isn't okay the way that you're acting. Sometimes we still need to do something with that anger inside. We might need to get some exercise, go for a run, listen to some music, squeeze a stuffed animal real tight. But we need to learn to listen to our anger. It's normal, but it's telling us something. This week, with your grown-ups, when you're feeling angry, I want you to try and figure out what you need to do with that anger. Did you make a choice that you need to apologize for and say, I'm sorry? Do you have a need like hunger or being tired that you need to take care of? Or maybe like Jesus, when he felt angry, your anger is telling you that something is not right and you need to help work towards making things better for yourself or someone else. These are big ideas, but let's pray and ask for God's help with that this week. Dear God, thank you for giving us the feeling of anger. Please help us to use it to help us learn how to grow and learn how to make things better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, friends. I hope you have a great week. And always remember, God made you, God loves you, and God is always with you. See you next week. Bye-bye.
Thank you, choir, for that awesome anthem. And Tara, for that tremendous lesson for the children and for we adults. There's a lot of good news to celebrate today. We prayed last week that the inauguration would go off safely, and praise God, it did. Dear God, we give you thanksgiving that our nation had the transfer of power, that we celebrated the inauguration of a new president. We thank you that it all transpired peacefully, O oh God, and we ask your blessings upon the current administration and that good things will happen in our country in the next four years. In your name we pray, amen. We have wonderful birthdays this week. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanksgiving for each and every one of us, and especially for these three who have birthdays this week. We lift up Michelle Meehan, whose birthday is on the 25th, and Deanna Dahman, whose birthday is on the 25th, and Jack Strisney, whose birthday is on the 25th. Give each of them just a wonderful time of celebration. Let them hear words of love from those dear to them. Receive cards, uh, uh, eat, eat cake, uh, ha have good presents. Just let them have a wonderful time and know that you love them. Amen. We uh, ask for prayers for Jack Storm. Dear Lord God, we, we lift up Jack who fell in Florida, was injured, and, and brought back by his, his son, he and Susan, back up here to Avon Lake. Uh, be with uh, both of them, but be with him in his, in his vulnerability and in his pain. Bring him healing and, and strength. Amen. We lift up prayers for Marcy Ewell's mother. We continue to pray, God, that you be with Marcy and her brothers and, and Gary, as they are knowing that their mother is, is being called from this life into the next, as she is on hospice, be with her, filling each moment of her life with your, your love and with your care. In your name we pray, amen. Let us continue to worship God in prayer. Dear Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we thank you for all the ways in which you are with us. We ask you to bless our church. Help us to continue our ministries in this virtual uh, reality uh, uh, that we are living in. Help us, each and every one of us, to find ways to share your love and your gospel with our friends and, and with strangers, with family members, with intimates. Help us to just reach out, whether it's by a letter, a card, an email, a text, whether it's by Zoom, a FaceTime, a phone call. Help us to reach out, go outside of ourselves, break through this isolation, and to, to join in with one another, sharing your love. We thank you, God, for this great warm love that you give us, this emotion of care for one another. Help us to be looking out for each other, helping, loving sharing. We ask you, O oh God, to, to bless all the organized ministries of our church, and thank you that they have been finding ways, we have been finding ways to continue to minister in the midst of this pandemic time. As it's been a year since the first hospitalization in this country of someone with COVID-19, it's been, been a year of living under the plague, and we thank you that you have been with us every moment of the way. You've been with us as we have had to change and transform everything that we do, not only we in this town, but all over the country, all over the world. We ask you, God, to, to bless the use of the vaccines. We're thankful that right within our town, right within our membership, uh, members who are in nursing care facilities are receiving the, the vaccine, that members are, who are frontline uh, uh, individuals are receiving the vaccine, uh, and then others who are on the next line down are, are already receiving them. Uh, we thank you for that and ask this vaccine to be powerful and strong, a good tool to help us to resume normal life. We ask all these things, O oh God, in the words that your Son, Jesus Christ, teaches us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Gratitude to all of you who are supporting the work of this church through the, the money that you send in through checks or give online. Dear God, we thank you for the generosity that you enable within us to support your spiritual work. Even when we aren't able to be together, still your people support your church. Praise God and hallelujah. Amen. Let us now sing the doxology.
Our scripture readings this morning are from Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. John chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told, told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciple remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Thank you, Will. What is anger? Anger is a, a hot feeling that we have. A anger is a, an energy to do something, to, to make a change, to get out of danger, to protect ourselves, to protect others. What is, what, what, what is this, this anger? We have some artwork today to help us look at anger and how we move through it in, in love. Uh, first, we have a picture from, from Adam Richardson. And as you can see, the, the face of the man, uh, that's an angry face. It's an angry face. He, he's about to get hit by this tree. Uh, and and, and uh, it, things are not going to go the way that he wanted them to. It, it's just going to be bad. And then he is angry in response to this danger. The next one here is a picture by Amy Reingoltz of of the wolf here. On the one hand, this shows the nobility of, of the wolf. And yet, when you and I look at it, and we're in the face of something that's dangerous, something that's threatening to harm us, anger wells up in it, us in, up in us. This, this, this energy to be able to, to fight, this energy to be able to, to protect. Thank you. Are we comfortable? with the anger that we feel. I know many of us feel that it's not right for a Christian to feel anger. And so we put on a mask when we feel angry, pretending to be calm. We put on a mask thinking that if we show our anger, we won't be accepted or the anger is not acceptable to us. And yet today we put down those masks for we know that God has made all these emotions that we feel and that there are blessings in them, even the ones that are difficult, the ones that are pain-filled. And anger is certainly that. There are kind of three common reasons, the, the events that happen that provoke anger within us. Cheesecake. Think about cheesecake. Think about a wonderful cheesecake that's set on your family table. You're gathered with family members. Think about that, that wonderful, wonderful cheesecake. And all are eating, and there's, there's one piece left. And you want that piece of cheesecake. Oh, you love New York style cheesecake. You live for that cheesecake. You want it, you've been dreaming of it. And just before you get the cheesecake, your sister takes the cheesecake. Your sister gets it and not you. What do you feel? You feel angry because you didn't get something that you wanted. Continue on with the cheesecake. This scenario, the family's gathered and you get your piece of cheesecake. In fact, everyone in the family has their piece of cheesecake and it's wonderful. It's slush, it looks beautiful. Uh, but, but before you have your cheesecake, cheesecake, your mom says to you, hey, Charlie, you better wash your hands before dinner. You've got to. So you leave, go wash your hands and you come back. And what do you find? Your brother has taken your piece of cheesecake. What do you feel when you lose something that's yours? Anger! When we lose something valuable to us, it's this emotion of anger. Third scenario, the cheesecake. You have your piece of cheesecake. You take your fork. You cut in the cheesecake. You lift it. You raise it to your lips. You put it in your mouth. Oh! 
Oh my gosh, you bit yourself. Oh, you crunched out on your lip and it hurts so much. And you just feel angry, don't you? You just feel angry when you get that pain. The unexpected pain. These are all common responses, common ways in which we feel anger. When we don't get something we want, when we lose something that we have, or when we feel pain, this this anger comes up. I have a a friend who's a wonderful spiritual director. She's going to help us a little bit how we use this anger for personal spiritual growth. I'd like to introduce you to Sister Mary Ann Spangler, who is a spiritual director. She helps many, many people uh, through life. I'm one of them. She has a lot of wisdom. And so, Sister Mary Ann, I have a question for you. How do I harness my anger to make positive changes in my life? Well, knowing that anger is an energy in us, sometimes invited, but most of the time spontaneous, we have to just try to think of what is causing that energy to stir up and flame up inside us, to um, re-channel that somehow, to redirect it somehow, to tame it in some way, but to acknowledge it by all means. it takes more than just being aware of it sometimes, and it takes more than just praying it away. Um, but acknowledging it with God and saying, I know it's part of me, and how do I realize where it's from? Is it an unresolved something in my past? Is it something in the roots that needs to be released or acknowledged? It's, it's something inside us wanting attention. Have you seen people make leaps in their spiritual growth through paying attention to anger that is welling within them? I really have, because it can bring about a release uh, or a releasement, some people call it, um, which leads to peace. With lead, it leads to inner harmony. Um, it's acknowledging where I've been harmed and hurt. And resolving that, um, at least by forgiving the person. Sometimes we're called to forgive, even though we may not restore a relationship. We've been hurt. And somehow there's some letting go that's called for. It's, it's challenging to address forgiveness when I've been hurt. But it will lead to peace. It will lead to calm. It will lead to the relationship with God that is a right relationship. Well, a lot of times we can feel agitated and upset and not necessarily know why. Um, Sometimes we've suppressed it and stuffed it inside and accumulated it until it can reach volcanic eruptions. And so depending upon our personalities, it's really important even day by day to kind of take our own temperature and see, is there something we need to ask pardon for? Is there need for forgiving someone that has that I felt hurt today? Um, rather than letting it accumulate and then have a volcanic outburst of some kind, would be a healthy way to um, continue to build that peace and harmony that we want within ourselves. Thank you, Sister Marianne. I like how she talks with us about how we need to pay attention to the anger that we have. Not to ignore it, not to push it away, but to realize that if we are feeling anger, that something has caused that. And if we look at the source of that anger, we can make changes in our life that are so good. You know, sometimes... When we feel anger, we think there is a threat, but there is none. See, anger, emotions are not intelligent. Just because we feel an emotion does not mean the experience that provoked it, that we are reading that correctly. We have to use our minds 
when we are feeling anger, to think back about what it is that provokes that anger. If we feel a threat, is it true? We know that in our society, there's kind of a common uh, thought that if I feel angry, then I must be right. If I feel that somebody is doing something uh, to harm me, uh, that if, and then I feel anger about it, well, then that anger makes me right. That's not true. Emotions are not intelligent. They're just our response to experiences. Let me give you an example. Let's say a few years ago, I had received a letter from the IRS, and that letter had told me that I owed $742 that I didn't pay. I get that letter, I read it, oh, I feel mad. I'm going to lose this money, this money that, that I had set aside for other purposes. I just felt anger, I felt mad. The IRS was going to take this extra money away. Okay, that's very normal. And then, five years later, right now, I open the mail and I see a letter from the IRS. Immediately, I become angry that the IRS is going to take from me again. I feel righteous. They shouldn't have done that. All this anger swells up at me going to lose this money. I take the mail inside, angrily rip open the letter to see what the IRS is going to take from me and see the IRS writes me and says, and going over your payments from three years ago, we made a mistake. We are returning to you $1,200. And there is a check. Oh my gosh, I feel great. But you see, my anger was misdirected. I thought there was a threat. I thought there was a danger. But there wasn't. That happens with us all the time. So when we feel anger, we feel threatened. We don't take it for granted that that emotion is speaking truth. We need to use our minds and see if there really is a threat. Very often, there's not. I'd like to go back to the picture of the wolf. And a wolf, a wild creature, if you approach the wolf and the wolf thinks that you are a threat, it's going to respond in anger. It's going to respond to, to attack, to harm you. It's very common to the wild creature if it perceives you are a danger and a threat. But you might not be, and it thinks that you are. Thank you. Just because we feel anger doesn't mean that we are right. As the Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. When we feel anger, we need to act peacefully with it. Jesus entered into the temple. In the story that we see Jesus going into the temple, we see that Jesus becomes angry. Jesus sees that the money changers are keeping the people from getting to God. And he angrily overthrows their tables. He angrily drives out the cattle and the pigeons. Why did Jesus do that? We're going to learn a little from another friend of mine. Her name is Melanie Schmois, and uh, we we'll learn from her. I have with us uh, Melanie Schmois, and Melanie is a licensed therapist, and she is a leadership coach with Mind Your Strength. Melanie's helped a lot of people work through their emotions as they you know, strive to be successful in their lives. So Melanie, I have a question for you. How do I harness my anger to make mm. positive changes in my life and in our society? What a great question. So what I would say, you know, to just back up a little bit, you know, I teach my clients that our emotions or our feelings are the fuel for the actions we want to take or sometimes not take. Anger puts us in the fight or flight, you know, state of being, you know, it's 
It's designed to help us protect ourselves or defend ourselves towards a threat. First of all, I should also mention there are three different types of anger. I didn't know if you, I didn't realize this till I, in graduate school, but we have the assertive type of anger, we have aggressive anger, and we have passive anger. So that aggressive anger, that's when we yell or we hit or we do something that we typically regret or feel guilty about. So if someone's engaging in aggressive behavior, I really try to teach them in the heat of the moment to calm down, to breathe, to try to get their reasoning side of their brain back online. And you do that by actually getting back into your senses and by breathing and reorienting yourself to the present moment. Some people have passive anger where they're really just stuffing and suppressing their anger. You know, you've heard the term passive aggressive, so they might do something in a passive way because they don't know how to communicate their anger in a healthy manner. And then if it's an assertive anger, that's what we're after. We're really trying to communicate with somebody in a non-threatening way, but also let them know that we're passionate, that this, whatever mission is important to us and it needs to change or stop or be, you know, different. We heard from Melanie that there are three kinds of anger. There is aggressive, and there is assertive, and there is passive. Aggressive anger being the anger that when we see in others and experience ourselves, we know it's wrong. Paul said, be angry, but do not sin. That aggressive anger, as she said, you know, that, 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 that's the violence. That, that's, that's always wrong. And then the passive anger she describes, that, that of not taking any, any direct actions to make changes, um, but just sort of complaining about things, talking behind backs. Um, and the extreme of the passive anger is turning it in on ourselves. And that leads to depression. And then she described sort of the goal, assertive anger, the way in which we can channel anger to make positive changes in our world, in which we see something that bothers us, we see another hurt or injured, and we want to change things so that doesn't happen. Jesus entered into the temple, and what he saw angered him. You see, at the Passover time, from all over Israel and all over the Mediterranean came Jews to the temple who were coming there to glorify God. They were coming to the temple that they might make sacrifices that were done for the purpose of, of finding forgiveness, of finding blessings, of uh, restoring order to the relationship with God and with others. The whole purpose of the temple in the history of Israel was to be this focus of God's presence that all people are invited into. But what was happening? The money changers, the money lenders, they were kind of like a perimeter around the temple. And those people selling the sacrifices, the animals, they were like a barrier for people who came to find God's presence. What had been intended as a good way for people to find God through the sacrifices had been ruined. The system had become rotten and evil. And Jesus was angry on behalf of all those people that were not finding the goodness from God that they needed and wanted. You see, when we love others, we extend out the feelings. At first, as selfish creatures, babies, we are only angry when we don't get what we want, when we are hurt, when we are denied. But then, as we grow, as we love others, we feel anger when those we love are hurt, when those we love are, are unable to get what they want, when those we love have things taken from them. 
and Jesus as the Son of God, as the Messiah, as God. Jesus loves all of us. And out of this compassion for us, when we are hurt, when we are kept from finding goodness, he becomes angry on our behalf out of this deep compassion. So what does Jesus do when he sees that there is this system in place that is harming people, keeping them from getting the good that they want and need? As Melanie says, aggressive anger, bad. Passive anger, bad. Assertive anger, a good. Jesus is very assertive. He harms no one. He does not curse at people. He declares, this is wrong. He declares, my father's house is to be a place of prayer and has become a place of thievery, of robbers. This is wrong. He was angry as he's expressing how what is to be good has become bad. And then he takes the tables and he turns them over, trying to destroy the system. Coins are going everywhere. Coins that were gathered to make the money changers rich. The historical reality The texts show that there had become a class of people at the temple this time who became extremely wealthy, including the high priest and his family. Extremely wealthy from the money changing, from the buying and selling of the sacrifices. That this that was intended to bless people had become a business for those who controlled it. To which Jesus says, is my father's house to be a marketplace, to be a business place? No. He used and channeled his anger to make good, to take down the system. And you know what? He was successful. Do we Christians buy sacrificial animals? No. No, we don't. We listen to what he said. We saw that the, that the temple, that the church is to be a place of prayer. And his words affected Judaism within a hundred years. Within Judaism, even those who didn't accept he was the Messiah, they accepted this idea that sacrifices, buying and selling of the animals to gain into God's presence was not needed. That prayer, prayer was what was needed. Today, the Presbyterian Church under the Matthew 25 program, has a goal to dismantle systemic racism, just like Jesus, attacking a system of evil, not with violence, but assertively, lifting up the needs of those who are harmed, showing a better way. Anger that God gives us It can be, as Sister Marianne had said to us, a signal that we need to make changes in our lives. Perhaps there are people that we need to forgive so we can let go of anger. We heard from Melanie that there are three kinds of anger, aggressive, assertive, and passive. And as we look at Jesus, as we look how he calls us to use our anger to make things better for others, we are called to be assertive, not harm anyone, but to speak the truth, the power, to make changes so that God's righteousness is known. Friends, anger is God's gift. Let us use it for his glory and our benefit. Amen. Let us go out under the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Amen.
Oh, oh.